Hey guys, it's Christy. Welcome to my channel. It's finally starting to feel like fall here in Houston and I'm so excited because I love the cooler weather. And one of my favorite things to do when it starts getting cooler like this is to cook some of my favorite comfort foods. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my all-time favorite apple recipe because it's so simple and it is really versatile. In fact, that's one of the things I like most about this recipe is all of the different ways that you can use it. So I'll be sharing some of those with you throughout the video as well. I'm using a pack of Gala apples that I picked up at Costco. I love to get my apples there because they sell organic apples, which I don't know if you know this or not, but you always wanna use organic apples because they're part of the dirty dozen, meaning that there's lots of pesticides used on them. So it's best to always get organic apples and then I still wash them really well when I get them home. So the first thing to do for these stewed apples is to start peeling our apples. I like to get all of the peels off of the apples and peeling these apples is definitely the hardest part of this whole recipe. When I'm doing this, I like to just turn on some music and use this time to relax. After all the apples are peeled, I use my core slicer just to slice up all the apples. And then I just use a paring knife to make sure I've gotten all of the peels off and any bits of core that were left in the apple. Once I have all of my apples in the pot, it's time to bring it to the stove, and that's where I go ahead and add all of the ingredients. So I start by adding three-fourths cup of water, and guys, this ended up being a little bit too much water, so next time I will use less. It had been a while since I made it, so I couldn't remember exactly, but probably half a cup would be good. You don't want to have too much water. Um, I just ended up boiling out the extra water at the end, but you don't want too much water because the apples are going to release a lot of water themselves. After the water, I add the cinnamon and I like a lot of cinnamon, so I just sprinkle it in there and just kind of go by eye. But if you were wanting to measure, I would start with a tablespoon and just keep going from there. Next, I grated just a little bit of nutmeg. I just mix everything well, get all the apples from the bottom, and once I do that, I like to add a little more cinnamon to it. The last thing I like to add to it is a tablespoon of butter. That's optional. You could leave that out if you wanted. And then also, if you wanted to sweeten it a little bit, you could add either a little bit of brown sugar or you could add a couple of tablespoons of maple syrup and that would give it a nice little sweetness, but I personally find them sweet enough with just the apples. Finally, I cover the apples and let them cook on high. Every so often, I'll just go and check on them and just stir, but it'll take, for this amount of apples, I think it took about 20 minutes for them to completely cook, and I stirred them a couple of times and maybe added a little more cinnamon once during the stirring process. 
like I said, I ended up with a little bit too much water, so at the end, I just took the lid off and let some of the water cook out. You'll know the apples are ready when they're completely soft, but still have their shape. The last thing to do is just serve up a bowl and enjoy. So I like to eat mine just plain and then I sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on top and I also like to add some pecans. I love eating these apples for breakfast or just for a snack or for dessert. They are so good anytime, but they're also great if you wanted to use it as a side dish for something like pork chops, or they work great as a topping for lots of different desserts. If you wanted to top some muffins or a pound cake or anything like that, they're delicious. And they also work well if you wanted to make a breakfast parfait and use some yogurt and some granola or anything like that. They are so good. Like I said, they are so versatile. And another thing is you can freeze these if you want to. They freeze really well, so you can put them in small containers and then have them whenever you're ready. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And that way I know to do more recipe videos like this. And if you're not already subscribed, I'd love to have you hit that subscribe button and join our community. And guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.